So the theme for today, really, we have a lot of uh, artificial intelligence. We're going to be uh, looking at the future of healthcare when it comes to revenue cycle and also how this change impacts uh, people, so technology, process, and people. Um, up next, we have uh, Anthony Steele. So uh, Anthony is going to be uh, discussing the future of artificial intelligence and how that impacts our patient financial systems and what the, uh, the cost of uh, that will actually uh, be, uh, not only for the patient, but uh, for the health system in general. Another big uh, theme for today is going to be our predictability. Not only how do we predict uh, that processes we put in place for the future are actually going to work and enable the technologies that we're purchasing and that we're investing in, also the predictability of our people and how people might adopt those technologies or not, depending on whether they perceive them as useful or easy to use. And so, in addition to uh, artificial intelligence and the technologies that you're going to see here and, and for the future, we're also going to have to, we're going to take a look at that predictability and the accuracy of that. <laughs> Anthony Steele, uh, utilizing, utilizing AI to accurately predict patient financial outcomes. Thank you, Anthony. Hi. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Um, thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk um, about artificial intelligence, which is, seems to be a bit of a big, uh, a big buzz idea around. It's been around for a few years, but really starting to gain, gain traction and gain momentum, particularly around healthcare. What I'm going to talk about today is about how we can apply artificial intelligence and um, pr more predictable, both clinical and financial, uh, uh, predictable clinical outcomes to, to reach more predictable financial outcomes before the fact. But before I get to that, if you'll allow me just to kind of take a little bit of a tangent first, in that um, I'm not based in the Middle East. Uh, I just came over here from, from the UK to, uh, to speak and visit Arab Health. And the first thing that happened when I, uh, when I found out a couple of weeks ago that I was going to come to Arab Health, I needed to go and do some planning. And the first thing that I needed to plan was I needed to know how I was going to get there, where I was going to stay, and then most importantly, most importantly probably for my boss, who's going to pay the bills, how much it's going to cost. Well, so there I am um, in, my, in the back of that jet. You can, tell it, you can tell it is the UK because it's all overcast and rainy and all that sort of stuff, so it is authentic. Um, but if you, if, you, if you backtrack three weeks ago, all of that planning that I had to do, how did I go to, to, about that? Well, fortunately, the travel industry has evolved to make these things really quite simple for me today with a few simple Googles, a few simple resources that I've been able to kind of know now, it was pretty easy for me to go and start to get that story of, as to how I was going to make that happen. First, first place I could go to was a, a flight or travel or hotel price comparison website, of which there's many out there. I've got a, a few examples up there. Um, just four examples. The one I like most and the one that I kind of use is this one here, Kayak. What I like about Kayak is it gives it, a couple of things. Number one, it has a lot of filters and things that I can use to say when, I'm, uh, when do I want to leave, when do I want to return, things like that. It allows me to make my decision not purely based on price, but also what's going to what's going to help me out. What's more convenient to me? It's no good me, you know, landing at a place at a in to D Dubai at a time that's inconvenient. That's number one. But number two is up in the top left-hand corner in kayak. It's, there's a little icon, and that icon says uh, whether whether now is the best time to buy a flight, or if it's better to hold off, maybe because we, we think that that flight may actually get a little bit cheaper. How does it do that? Well, I'm, I'm no expert in the travel industry and in price comparison websites, but I think what it does is it uses the data that is collected from the history of monitoring what, what's happened previously in order to, take, to learn and do a best guess of when is the best time to buy a flight. Now, pr price comparison websites and, and, and this type of thing for the consumer, the travel industry was probably one of the first ones where I first started to use it, but this kind of concept is 
revolutionised many industries. If you want to go and buy a new mobile phone, a new mobile phone plan, a um, travel insurance, insurance is massive for it as well, car insurance, home insurance, the first place that you can go to is a price comparison website to go and try and make a better decision as to what you are going to do, where you're going to buy your device from, what health, what health plan or what um, insurance plan you're going to buy. And here's just an example of some local ones that I came up with just to, to, buy, to buy a mobile phone. But now let's come off that tangent and come to back why we're all here, which is healthcare. If I needed to go and have some elective surgery that I was going to pay for, what is the first thing I'm going to do, like what I did three weeks back when I found out I was coming to Arab Health? How can I make that decision based on how much it's going to cost in healthcare? if I'm going to, do, to have a knee replacement or a hip replacement, some dental work. Well, the first thing that you can do, of course, is you can go out to Google, and a lot of hospitals will have their prices out there, and they'll you know, give you a vague range of how much it's going to cost. And there are even some price comparison websites, which are starting to come out there as well, but it's not quite like the travel ones that I was talking about earlier or the ones for mobile phones. It's not an exact science. Prices that you get are either a bit vague, prices from 70,000 dirhams, or we just hit a link to say, please let us know that you're interested in this procedure. Completely different to the user experience. So why is healthcare different? Well, there's a number of reasons, but the main reason is, is that healthcare when it comes to things like elective surgeries, isn't just cookie cutter like it is for a flight or a hotel. In order to get an accurate idea of what the patient is going to need, we really need to know a lot more about who that patient is, be it their, their height, their weight, demographics, ethnicity, uh, previous, previous history, as well as what is actually wrong with them. They say, say that may, the procedure that they want is a... Is a one thing, but we, we may decide that we want something else. So in order to accurately do this, we can't, at the moment, just put, our, put what we want into a price comparison website. We need to sit down and have a consultation with them. We need to sit down and learn about them. However, five years ago when I logged onto those, web, those travel uh, price comparison websites, it didn't know what... Uh, wasn't able to tell me whether it was a good time to buy yet or not. That's something that's evolved. And there's a few things around now from a healthcare perspective that's allowed us now to evolve where we are almost at the stage where we can start to give that same user experience from a price comparison website as we may get for being able to accurately estimate how much a medical procedure is going to cost. For example, the big, big things are big data, of course. Our aggregated data that we've, that we've gathered up over time, we're getting um, better compliance of data collection from our electronic, uh, electronic medical records as well as our financial records. We're using clinically uh, driven revenue cycle so we can link those financial outcomes and the clinical outcomes together to get a clearer story of what what happens to uh, various patients across a widespread of demographics and, pre and previous conditions to come out the other end to accurately predict both the clini clinical outcomes, but then more importantly for, for my topic today, the financial outcomes. And then, of course, artificial intelligence, the ability to go into that data and learn off it. So where we are now is that Big data, or big data, as I call it, uh, plus the artificial intelligence is going is uh, is going to is resulting and revolutionising how we can produce our clinical our financial outcomes at the end of that. So we've talked a lot about the benefit of the consumer for this, but what what are going to be the benefits for facilities as we go through this evolution? Well, obviously, if if we're able to better predict the financial outcomes based on, based on a clinical past. A lot of the resources used to generate those, um, those estimates, rather than sitting down and having a consultation with a patient, we may be able to free up our clinical resources to do other things with cost savings. 
we may eventually be able to get to a point where we can expose uh, a, an API and actually have those um, price comparison websites do that for us to completely take the resor those resources away from our, from our hospital and from our clinicians. We'll be able to better predict revenue streams. We'll be able to better advertise our services. We'll be able to market our services using those websites with a, with a more accurate picture of how much something is going to cost. And also better accurately predict our, our margins, our, um, you know, our pricing. So that's where, that's where we are today. We really need to get uh, healthcare to bridge that gap to where the, the, uh, the other industries that I talked about, specifically the travel industry, a little way to get to, but we've got the technology now, we've got the data, just need to bridge the gap. Thank you, Anthony. That's, that's awesome, I think, because I think we'd all like to have that kayak website of healthcare providers. Um, any questions for Anthony? Anthony, thank you very much. I think <clears throat> that's very impressive. But I was, I was thinking through, uh, through your presentation, it took the technology five years to be able to tell us where the ticket would be cheaper. Mm -hmm. But we are looking at it from a technology perspective. Mm -hmm. We're not looking at it from a consumer perspective. Like, if I am to ask you, and I don't know the answer, I don't believe that you might know the answer, but if I ask you five years back, if the system asks you to wait, not to buy it, would you actually wait? Or you just say, oh, they're bluffing me now. I don't believe that's true. I'm buying it now anyway. Maybe tomorrow it will be more expensive. It's a marketing slogan. We are looking at this stuff. I mean, I think my question going toward, have you seen any consumer behavior on a healthcare that drives the next innovation for the AI? Are they accepting it? Are they looking for it or they are resisting? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question, isn't it? I mean, how do you... How, um, I think because AI, particularly from a revenue cycle standpoint, is, is still very new in our industry, I, th I think there's a lot more acceptance in the marketplace for people to trust um, the, the comparisons and the, and the reporting tools and things that it's done for, under, for other industries. So I think for, for healthcare, as we go through that revolution, um, I, I think that's something that's going to help us because I think the, con the consumer uh, are more, sus more susceptible, more accepting of being told what, is the, what they think is the best thing to do, if that kind of, if that kind of makes sense. Um, but, but you're right, there is, there is going to be, uh, there, is, there does need to be a bit of a paradigm shift um, as to how people collect their data when it comes when it or when it comes to things like this, um, and yeah, I, I I don't don't think I know the full answer yet. I think I think there's, that we need to see how that see, see how that kind of consumer behaviour plays out. Other questions, Russell. Hi there, Anthony. Hi. Uh, currently, at the moment, in elective surgery, you spoke about having a clinical assessment beforehand to kind of predict costs. Uh, has any work been done to find out how accurate that clinical assessment has actually been in predicting those costs, or is that just that data doesn't exist? The the, da the data exists on the back end from a re from a reporting standpoint. Um, I think where we're at at the moment is is tying uh, at, at the moment I think there's been a bit of a, a bit of a gap between the collection of the financial data and and the clinical data and as we have we move towards more clinically driven revenue cycle we're, we're a able to bridge that gap so I think we're collecting the data on that now but you're right the challenge needs to be how we tie that together in order to, to better predict those outcomes and that's that's really the point where, where we're at before you, you actually see the the accuracy and the and the APIs that can be expo exposed out to to like a broker or a warehouse. Any other questions for Anthony? Okay. Well, thank you very much, Anthony. That was very nice. Thank you.